boomer, mate. There's no reason why we're cutting the grass the whole fucking time. Yeah, I'm hunting those mongrel man packs. There's another one. Got him! Good day, ladies and gents, and welcome back to Halliborn with Mags. So, it has been quite some time since I've done an update video on the development of Halliborn, and quite a lot has happened in this time, although a lot of it not entirely obvious to those who play. Quite a lot of the development time since my last video and this one have been the guys over at JetCat working very hard on a lot of back-end stuff. So today we're going to quickly go over that, as well as the changes that are very visible to players, a few of the known issues, and some of the future developments that are currently underway for Halliborn right now. So, first things first, a big portion of the recent development time has actually gone into JetCat changing to the Unity 5 engine. This engine upgrade has been mostly seamless. To those who didn't know it was happening, you probably didn't even realize that the engine had been upgraded. Now this may sound simple, Unity 4 to Unity 5 is just a variation on the same engine, right? Not really. The differences between Unity 4 to Unity 5 are like the differences between Unreal Engine to CryEngine. There is a huge amount of back-end stuff that was actually changed. A lot of it makes it a lot easier for JetCat to actually work on the programming and development stuff on their side, allowing for vast improvements in the back end of the game. So again, stuff that wouldn't be overly visible to a user. But Unity 5 also allows a whole host of upgrades in terms of visual quality, map sizes, and so on that can actually be done. It's opened up a lot of doors for JetCat's future development to really ramp up the visual quality of the game, to allow more options in terms of map design, allow more active physics to be active within the game itself, as well as making a huge host of things in the back end really easy for them to work with, or at least easier than they were, giving them more options in terms of development. So what about more obvious changes since the last time I updated? Well, first up, we have the hangar system. The hangar UI has been completely overhauled, with all the decks now displayed at the bottom of the screen and you can clearly see which helos are in each deck, as well as the actual visual display now showing a runway with the three helos on the ground, making it much clearer on exactly what you've got and much more attractive. There's a lot of little subtle background details as well, such as when you change between a Soviet lineup and an American lineup, the aircraft in the background change from the MiG-21 over to the F-4 Phantom. And likewise, the entire deck building system has been streamlined, making it much easier to set up your loadouts and just to be a much more user-friendly design overall. The same thing again has been done to the helicopter loadout screen. You now get a much better look at the helicopters. Some of them appear to have had some visual model tweaks, just improving them, as well as small little animations done to the helos themselves. And you can clearly see what loadouts are on them, and you can see the visual change between the loadouts being able to look at the helo from all directions. You'll also notice as you scroll around particular helicopters, you'll hear the actual engine sounds of the helos running. And if you look very closely into the cockpits, all the cockpit gauges are now actually lit up inside. So just some nice little visual tweaks, again, some streamlining of the systems themselves and an increase in visual quality, making things look much nicer as you're customizing your decks and your helicopters, getting them ready for the battles you go into. These UI improvements have extended into the settings themselves. We now have options for a few debug tools. We have options for a few chat tools in the common settings. Very easy, very simple to understand. Much wider selection of graphical options to be able to play around with. All the controls are now fully customizable, so you can set them to whatever you're comfortable with. All of the HUD elements are completely customizable now as well. So overall, some great quality of life improvements within the UI, which was something that was definitely needed in Halliborn. We also have an entirely new map, which you can see being played in the background. This is Afghanistan, Kost Province. It is, I'm pretty sure, the largest map they've actually made yet. Lots of rolling planes, lots of bases, a lot of area to manoeuvre and flank and move your way around, while still having enough changes in terrain elevation to allow you to slip around undetected map of the earth and set up ambush points both for enemy helos and on the convoys that move between the bases themselves. There is also a massive amount of ground convoys on this map with matches usually revolving around the team who can defend those convoys the best being the team that wins. 
Other gameplay changes include tweaks to how man pads operate. At the moment, the missiles have been tweaked to be less powerful than they were in the past, and the cost of man pad units themselves have been increased, preventing spamming. Similar changes to guided missile effectiveness have also been done, and there has been tweaks done to exactly how countermeasures work. I still find all guided missiles to be a little bit to the powerful side, but this is an early access game. After all, it is in alpha. It does require more tweaking and more balancing over time, and you would expect to see that by game release. Mortars have also had some tweaks to their operation in order to streamline how they operate, and more importantly, one of the changes that I mentioned in one of my last Teleborn videos is in place, and has been for a little while now, door gunners. Now, the door gunners have three modes of operation. They have off as standard, so they will not react or do anything. You have a manual mode where you can manually control the guns as if they were a turret attached to your helicopter. They have a limited arc of fire and they do respond to how you actually control your helicopter, so keeping the helicopter stable while manually gunning is very important in order to have them be usable. Now, the third mode is automatic mode. However, to prevent helos with multiple gunner positions on them becoming multi-turreted air-to-air nightmares, there are some restrictions on the automatic fire mode. Firstly, the automatic door gunners, or the door gunners when set to automatic mode, will only engage targets that are at reasonably close ranges. They will not engage over long range. So you will have to come in and make fast strafing passes very close to the ground targets that you're trying to hit. And I should put an emphasis on ground targets because that is the second restriction. Door gunners will only engage ground targets. They will not engage other helicopters. This is to prevent, as I said before, players with door gunners simply activating automatic firing mode and then chasing enemy helos around the sky and letting the door gunners do all the work. If you want to shoot down a helicopter, you still have to do it manually. The door gunners will simply allow you a little bit more flexibility and a few more options when engaging ground convoys in terms of maneuvering while still keeping damage up on the targets. Now again, for another change that wouldn't be obvious if you weren't looking for it, Jetcat Games is no longer an independent developer. They've signed up with Klebeta. Now, Klebeta is a indie publishing house based out of Poland and was founded by CD Projekt, the developers that gave us such wonderful titles as The Witcher. Now, this is fantastic news for everybody who's actually been following the Halliborn project, as this sign-up allows Jetcat some financial support, as is normal from being a published game. But this particular publishing house has access to a large amount of resources that will allow Halliborn to rapidly expand its scope. For example, it's been recently revealed that there is currently a single player and co-op campaign under development for Halliborn. The details on it are a little thin on the ground at this point as it is still early developments and we expect to see more information on it in the future, but the illogical assumption is that this campaign will involve at least one of the major war zones represented inside of Halliborn, so Vietnam, Afghanistan, so on, and quite possibly could involve multiple campaigns spanning over all of the war zones covered. And the campaigns are likely to have playable options from both sides, so both from NATO forces and from Warsaw forces, depending on their usage and deployment in each of the war zones represented. So all in all, fantastic news for us, fantastic news for Jetcat, fantastic news for everybody. This partnership should lead to some fantastic developments in Halliborn, and I'm looking forward to trying and testing all of them. Speaking of new changes to Halliborn as well, there is one other thing that was under development and it was mentioned previously in the past, although it is getting much closer as I understand it to development, is the upgraded flight model as well as joystick and HOTAS support. Now these are still not ready for the game currently, but I do understand that they are under development at this time, and I've actually been personally requested by Damien Rain over at Jetcat Games to be one of his testers, to take a look at the control systems when they become available to do so. And I intend to do that, and if I am given permission to do so, give you guys a look inside at exactly how this is all going to operate when it becomes available. Now I should stress that the flight model changes are not going to be full realism. Halliborn is not a simulator, it is an arcade game. Full realistic flight controls. The easy way to put this, helicopters are hard. And it's not just hard to model, they're hard to fly. I personally get quite a lot of amusement of seeing first time helicopter pilots trying to take off inside of DCS and watching them just discover the fun and joy that is Rotor Overtalk and VRS. It amuses the hell out of me, but that is not an experience that you want players coming into an arcade game to actually have. While I of course haven't seen any of the new development at this time, I would make the assumption that the controls will still be arcadey, but will have a 
much more realistic feel to them. I know it's been mentioned in the past that the helicopters will not be perfectly stable in flight anymore. You will have to counter slightly on the controls, adjusting the cyclic in order to stabilize the helicopter during maneuvers. And I would expect that the helicopters are likely to require cyclic input as well as throttle adjustments in order to maintain altitude and flight. So you won't be just set altitude, press W and you fly forward. You'll have to lean the helicopter forward and you may need to tweak the throttle in order to maintain altitude and things like that. And I mainly make that assumption because because I've seen that kind of control scheme inside of other arcade games before and it's worked really well. Things I don't expect you to have to deal with would be things like VRS, rotor torque. I don't expect you would have to worry about adjusting the rudder itself. I expect that will be automatic. And of course, I don't expect you'll have to deal with some of the nightmare fuel side of helicopter physics. That said, I am going a little into speculation territory here, but we shall wait and see exactly what happens. Regardless, I do know that the controls are coming and I look forward to showing you how they work. And of course this leads us on to known issues, and there are a few. Halliborn is an alpha development in early access, so you would expect a couple. And there are some bugs here and there, there is definitely some physics glitches that are still in the game. Most of these have been reported at this time, such as the come into contact with the ground gently and your helicopter will occasionally just explode. Uh, that one is amusing. Uh, the hit detection is another one. It is constantly complained about, and I've been having a chat with Damien Rain about it, and it's not actually so much of a hit detection issue as it is a netcode issue. Regardless, at this point, the developers are well aware of it, and they are making steps to try and improve it, and hopefully we'll see the results of these steps in the very near future. And the last one I constantly see brought up is balance, and that is always going to be an issue with any game of this kind. In all honesty, I'm not overly concerned about it at this time. Once things like netcode are sorted out, the balance will tend to find its own middle ground, and it's something that will shift back and forth over the course of development. As new helicopters are added, other helicopters will need to be adjusted in order to make room for them and to make sure that uh, everything is nicely panned out. Some helicopters may need to change errors. There is a couple of helicopters, such as the Cobra, that technically falls into two generations of operation, so it will need some tweaks. For example, the I believe the Cobra has the guided missiles in Generation 3, but it probably shouldn't have access to that particular loadout until Generation 4. So it'll possibly see a situation where the same helicopter can appear in two generations of combat, but will have different loadouts depending on which generation that you're operating in. So, overall, a hell of a lot has been going on with Halliborn, and sorry this is a bit of an info dump, but I have been, well basically I've been a bit slack and I haven't been covering the game as closely as I probably should have been, because it is a fantastic title and I do enjoy playing it, I'm really looking forward to its future developments. If you're interested in playing around with the early access or supporting development, there is a link to Halliborn on Steam in the video description below. And I'll also be starting to organise regular Halliborn flyouts on my Discord. I'm planning on doing one of these about once every two weeks. I haven't decided on a set day yet, but if you join my Discord, it will be listed in the announcements section. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to click that like button if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, and until next time, fly smart, fly safe. And I'll catch you in the skies.